broken again? I see. The yard manager looked dismayed to see Edward back so soon. He disappeared into his office, looking pale and muttering something about costing a rally a fortune. Even so, the workmen dutifully set about loading Edward's flatbed once more. Oh, this is trouble to change the light bulb, chuckled one. Can they do with a candle for now? <laughs> Edward didn't laugh at the cheery banter. He hurried off as soon as the guard signalled. It was getting later and later. All Edward wanted now was to be with his friends, but he knew he had to finish his job first. Finally, hurrah! Cheered Edward. This present dog's head! We'll be on a coastal run in no time now. But the docks were very busy. All the through tracks were blocked with engines, keen to have their trucks loaded. Edward had to wait behind Percy on the inside line, who was collecting more firewood for the display. The dog were being careful, and it was taking a long time. Oh, you look cranky! James snorted. I need time for a wash down before the party tonight. Huh? I didn't get invited to this rotten party! Cranky retorted, and seemed to slow down even more. Molly cut in to stop the argument. Uh, what are you collecting anyway, James? She asked. A power generator for the refreshment tent. I suppose it'll be very big and heavy. No trouble for me, of course. <laughs> At last, Percy puffed off and Edward made to follow. Neither got very far when Percy stole suddenly in a huge burst of steam. Oh, sorry! He called back to Edward. I don't know what's wrong! Then there was trouble again. Edward had stopped right alongside James, just as Cranky swung around with his load. James was right. It was very big and heavy. What have you done? shrieked James. I'm over here! Bah! You use our little bugs all look the same for this height! The crane grumbled. Salty shunted Percy away to a siding. While Cranky transferred the generator over the James's train. All that remained on poor Edward's flatbed was a mess of splintered wood and broken glass. Oh my, sniffed James. Not so much of a special, special, is it? Perhaps it was lucky for James that Edward didn't hear him. Much to Edward's surprise, the yard was now empty. There were no people or engines about at all. You must have all gone home early, suggested the guard. Oh, that's a relief, sighed the driver. Let's get loaded quickly and be on our way. His crew had just finished as the rain began to fall. Oh, that's all we need, Edward groaned. How could such a simple job turn into a disaster? His driver tried to rally him. And now don't let you get him down. Everyone has to run a bad luck like this sometimes. No matter how old or wise they are, added the fireman. You're right, huffed Edward. I've beaten worse than this before, and I can do it again. One more try. The old engine gritted his gears and headed off into the downpour. Edward made his way up without further mishap, and by the time they reached the coastal track, the weather had brightened up. Good, he thought. Any more rain and a party might have been cancelled. I hope the others are enjoying themselves. At last, a red and white striped lighthouse loomed large in the distance. The lighthouse keeper greeted them warmly. Oh, thank you, said the keeper. We thought you weren't coming. 
We had uh, one or two delays along the way, granted, but nothing too serious though. The keeper helped the men unload the crates. There, he said. All that stuff new is for me to get this great heavy thing upstairs. Two hundred strips on the last coat. It was driver and fireman looked at each other, sighed and shrugged. We'll uh, give you a hand if you like, offered the driver. Oh, would you? Oh, that's very kind. Carefully though, those both break very easily. Edward's crew chuckled knowingly as they followed the keeper inside. Meanwhile, Edward dozed as he waited patiently in the golden evening sun. I may have missed the party, he told himself, but I'll sleep well tonight knowing the light tells us there to keep boats like that one safe at sea. It was dark by the time they set off for home. Edward crawled wearily up Gordon's Hill, thinking of his nice cosy shed. But as he reached the crest, he suddenly screeched to a stop, amazed. Come on, Edward, called the driver. We're all tired, but there's no place for a... He trailed off and stared out of the cab. The night sky ahead was lit up with flashes of every colour imaginable. It was the fireworks display. The fireman poked his head out too. What I'll be! he exclaimed. This must be the best view in the island! Edward just smiled as he coasted down the hill. The fireworks weren't the only reason he had stopped. For shining brightest of all were the beams from the Sodor Lighthouse.